going on guys this is buddy coming back at you with another video I want to talk a little bit today about uh, refugiums the benefits of a refugium and the benefits of a wet dry filter and why and when I would use either one of those filters you know depending on the type of tank I have and uh, why I would use each filter for that system and I want to touch a little bit on that and one more thing I want to touch on guys is always get yourself right from the start a good RODI unit guys Never set up a system without a good RODI unit, guys. That's very important. And I'm going to touch on that, that a little bit, too, show you the one that I have and the reason why I say that, guys. All right? So let's go back over here. I'll show you my RODI unit really fast, and I'll talk about that. This is a six-stage. Let me turn the light on, guys. Hold on. This is a six-stage RODI unit, guys. It's water made by Water General, right there is uh, the um, company that I got it from and all that stuff. This is the serial number if you guys wanted to buy the same one, the model number, all right. So basically this is a six stage RODI unit, 110 gallons a day. It's got two DI resin chambers. It's got your sediment filter, one sediment filter, two carbon filters, <clears throat> and an RO membrane. You know, this is very important, guys, to get a good RODI unit, all right? Now, I want to get back to the video where I was talking about uh, why I made the video, and I was talking about uh, different types of filtration. And I'm just going to touch a little bit on each one just because there's so much information to cover, guys. I can never get it all in on one video. And if you want to know a little bit more about each filter system, um, definitely hit me up, and I can talk more in depth and, and give you um, more detail about each one, guys. All right. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> we're going to start with a, 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 a wet-dry filter. Now, a wet-dry filter in this first chamber basically would be filled with bio balls and would have a plate, basically like a plate on top with a bunch of holes in it. And as the water drains down from the main display tank onto that plate, all the, the water would evenly dispute through those holes onto the bio balls, and it would drip down over the bio balls and, and change a lot of beneficial bacteria. The bio balls would house a lot of beneficial bacteria to help process the nutrients in the aquarium. And that's why I would set up, only set up a drip dry system, or a wet dry filter, excuse me, on a fish only system. Because in a fish only system, guys tend to pack it full of fish. It's a fish only system. So they have a lot of fish in the fish only system. As here, as you see, I do not have a lot of fish. This is a reef aquarium. I have very few fish. I have actually I have five fish in this aquarium, and and that's it, guys. And they're small. The biggest one is the yellow tang. I will be adding one more fish to the system, but when I do that, one will be going. The cardinal, the Bengal cardinal, will be going. I will be swapping him out. I will be giving him to a friend of mine that just started an aquarium. His tank's been up and running now for about two months, and he's looking to add a fish. So I'm going to let him have him. All right, so now back to the video. All right, so in a fish-only system, guys tend to pack a fish, the tank, with a lot of fish. Like they may take, let's say for an example, a 90-gallon system and pack it with 15 to 16 fish, maybe more, maybe a little less. You know, that's a lot of fish. That's a huge bio load. So a wet-dry filter, wet filter is going to help. Those bio balls are going to help. Um, process all that excess uh, nutrients. They're going to grow a lot. Of, they're going to house a lot of beneficial bacteria to break down the excess nutrients. And keep in mind, guys, no matter what system, always get a good protein skimmer. Double the size of your skimmer. That's a good rule of thumb, guys. If you have a 65 gallon aquarium, like I do in, in my case, I have 125. My skimmer is rated for a 125 gallon aquarium, guys. Always get a, a double the size of. Get a skimmer rated for double the size of your aquarium. Skimmers, all skimmers, only remove 30% of dissolved organics, proteins. Only remove 30% um, out of the water. So keep that in mind, guys. All right. So back to the video. And why I do a refugium in a reef aquarium. Basically because in all my refugiums I set up, I put miracle mud in there. As you can see, there's miracle mud in the bottom. And... There's macroalgae, obviously. That's what a refugium is. <laughs> now, the macroalgae does consume nitrates and phosphates. 
But keep in mind, guys, you actually have to harvest the macroalgae to actually remove any of the nitrates or phosphates. Now, keep in mind that uh, most refugiums, like in my case, are small. They're not that big. So as far as nutrient export, a way of removing nutrients, it's removing very little. It's making a very small impact on the overall aquarium. Okay? So always make sure you have um, a phosphate reactor. I run GFO and carbon in that reactor. I'm going to switch to a dual, but as of right now, I have the one reactor. Okay, so I don't use a refugium necessarily for nutrient export. Does it help? Yes, but very little. Keep that in mind. But all the microfauna and trigger pods and cocoa pods that grow, that naturally populate within the refugium are detritivores. They do eat detritus, broken down, you know, excess food and, and, and things like that. So they are detritus for detritivores. They feed on that. So that is another good thing about a refugium. Now, if you have a fish-only system and you have a refugium, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because there's not. You know, when you have the miracle mud in there, the, the miracle mud's releasing a lot of minerals and stuff within the aquarium that is very beneficial to the fish and corals and stuff you're housing. So, there, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a refugium on a fish-only system. Just in my opinion, if I was to set up a fish-only system, considering we generally fish-only system, pack it full of fish. I would have a wet dry filter for that reason, for all the beneficial bacteria that will grow on those bio balls. It's going to help to consume and break down that nutrients. Alright, so like I said, back to the refugium. Now, the all the trigger pods and microfauna and cocoa pods that populate within the refugium um, are detritivores. And they're going to help to, to eat excess waste and stuff that comes down from the main display tank. And on occasions, they're going to make it up to your, they're going to make it up through your return pump and make for a healthy snack for the fish and corals that are in your main display tank. So that's why I use it on a reef aquarium. And there's a lot of there's a lot of natural things that are occurring. I mean, there's so much stuff, guys, that I'm leaving out that I don't even have time to touch on, just just because these videos take me so long to upload. But uh, basically, I just want to touch on a couple quick things um, on the on the different types of, of the two different types of the wet dry and the refugium uh, filtration. I just want to touch on it a little bit, guys. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into detail. I will do a detailed video on each individual types of filtration and and spend a few minutes talking about each you know each one do separate videos but I just want to touch on it a little bit basically um, with the Miracle Mud down there that's also a denitrification and uh, Ling he's the maker of Miracle Mud he also states that Miracle Mud by itself you don't need to run a skimmer okay you know so that's that's another benefit to having a refugium and keep in mind guys I'm not I on a fish only system um, you know you want to run a skimmer no matter what I would always run one um, but I'm just saying with the miracle mud they state that you don't have to you know and if you do to run only run one six hours a day I run mine 24 7 but basically what I'm saying if you have one for a fish only system you're not doing anything wrong there's nothing wrong with that guys nothing at all but in a reef aquarium you generally have less fish because it's more for corals and stuff like that so you don't have as many fish and that's why I believe a refugium is very effective on a reef aquarium now on a fish only system guys now it's very important that that you totally taken what I'm saying under consideration. Now, if you have a reef aquarium, there's nothing wrong with having a drip dry, a wet dry filter, drip dry filter, however you want to say it. But in my opinion, um, for a fish only system, I would use a wet dry filter. And for a reef aquarium, I would use a refugium because of those benefits. The Miracle Mud now, having that in there is a huge benefit because it's releasing tons of minerals and nutrients in the aquarium on a daily basis. Now that's also a great benefit to having that refugium. Now don't think of a refugium as, as a way to process excess nutrients, okay? Because it does very little in that aspect. And you do have to harvest the macroalgae to remove that nutrients, guys. So keep that in mind, okay? You know, always have a good protein skimmer. Don't have a refugium and use it as, a, as an excuse to slack off because it will not be uh, beneficial to you in that case. You will have problems. And always have a good water change schedule no matter uh, what aquarium you have. I always recommend running carbon and GFO. 
in every aquarium, whether it's a fish only or reef aquarium, guys. Now, there's plenty of stuff that I left out. I just wanted to touch a little bit on each types of filtration. Um, I'll do a better video later on um, discussing each individual one and uh, really getting in detail with it, guys. I just wanted to just, just start the discussion, basically, and do an introduction video here. But, uh, yeah, all right, guys, uh, happy reefing. If you have any questions, comments, post them, let me know. All right, guys, have a good one.